you. Um, I must uh, start by telling you that um, I'm actually here under slightly false pretenses because I'm not really going to argue in defence of the Catholic Church. Um, I'm not going to really argue that Catholicism is a force for good in the world, I'm afraid to say. But I am going to argue that the modern, trendy, achingly fashionable hatred of Catholicism is a very bad thing. So bad, in fact, that it almost makes Catholicism look benign and possibly positive in comparison. I want to argue that anti-Catholicism, which is now so widespread amongst Britain and Ireland's new atheists, and in places like you know, Dublin 4 and Islington, I want to argue that this kind of contemporary anti-Catholicism is an extremely backward and destructive force. Uh, so much so that it could soon make us all feel rather nostalgic for the old Catholic island that we thought we had left behind. Uh, I've come to this debate as uh, an atheist and as a secularist, and as someone whose hero is Thomas Paine, the greatest rationalist and secularist of the modern age, who famously said, my only religion is to do good. That's also my religion, to do good, if I can. Uh, but I am an atheist who finds himself increasingly uncomfortable with the intolerance, censoriousness, and misanthropy of modern atheists the modern atheist set, the kind of people who are these days referred to as the new atheists. And I want to argue tonight that these atheists have given up on the project of enlightening mankind, of expanding our knowledge, of uh, expanding our understanding of the world in favour of simply attacking religious people whom they view as stupid, gullible, uncouth and irrational. And I believe that that kind of narrow anti-religionism is really an insult to the great tradition of secularism and actually poses a far greater threat to liberty and reason today than religion does and than uh, Catholicism does. That is the weird situation we find ourselves in today. A fairly historically unique situation where those who call themselves secularists are doing greater damage to reason and humanism than religious people are. And I want to look at two aspects of the new anti-Catholicism and then explain why I think uh, they're so bad that they make Catholicism look like a wonderful thing that we're all going to miss. First, I want to look at how uh, the, its attacks, these attacks on Catholicism are driven by some pretty backward sentiments, some pretty reactionary sentiments. And second, I want to look at what this anti-Catholicism reveals about today's deeply problematic anti-religious elitism, which is now extremely influential. So on the first thing, on the backward sentiments that lie behind uh, the new anti-Catholicism, the great irony of today's anti-Catholicism is that it actually rehabilitates some of the worst aspects of the old Catholic hysteria. It actually rehabilitates some of the worst things about the old, old Catholic island, but it rehabilitates them in a new, secular, politically correct language. It actually borrows from the larder of Catholic <coughs> prejudice and Catholic demonology in its own demonization of Catholicism and particularly of Catholic priests. It uses medieval-style tactics against the Catholic Church, ironically, which means it actually denigrates public life rather than enhancing or enlightening it. And this is clearest, I think, in Ireland, which is a country I know a little bit about, probably not as much as most people in this room. And I think what we're seeing at the moment is a shift from Catholic Ireland to anti-Catholic Ireland. And there's been nothing in between. There has just been this country that was Catholic Ireland for a great number of decades, and now it's anti-Catholic Ireland, where the state and the government and politicians are reorientating themselves around being anti-Catholic, anti-priest, and very suspicious of the church. And this new anti-Catholic island is actually not a very nice place. And I think what, what we can see in Ireland at the moment is very clearly the chattering classes, politicians, and even the state now defining themselves in opposition to the old Catholic church or at least in opposition to the excesses and the sins of the old 
Catholic Church. And this has given rise to what I describe as an anti-Catholic island, which looks eerily like old Catholic Ireland. It borrows a great deal from old Catholic Ireland in its attempt to establish this new um, post-Catholic kind of secular state. I just want to look at three things that the anti-Catholic anti uh, activists and commentators borrow from uh, the old Catholic way of doing things. The first thing they borrow very liberally <coughs> is the old Catholic attitude of demonology. One of the key things that the old Catholic Church used to do right from the uh, witch hunting period through to the more modern era was to enact a process of demonology. It, it was always looking for demons, people it could attack, people it could define itself against by saying those people are demons, those people are evil, those people pose a threat to the moral fabric and therefore if you must stand against them, you must hunt them, you must destroy them. And it the demons changed through different periods. Most notably, there were witches. These were the great demons of the medieval <coughs> period, and the Catholic Church and others hunted them down and burned them or dumped them into water or whatever. And it can shift from witches to whores, to sinners, to all sorts of people who are seen as being corrupt. And not only as being corrupt, but are seen as corrupting society, destroying society. Uh, tearing apart the fabric of the society that we live in. It was a very nasty kind of moralism which was driven by a desire to define yourself in opportunistic opposition to people you judged to be evil. The anti-Catholic uh, activists of today have completely rehabilitated that old form of demonology. And they aim it now not at witches, but at Catholic priests. It is now Catholic priests, we are told, again and again, through state reports, through books, through exposés, through RTE TV programmes, it is now Catholic priests who are, the, who are the great threat to modern Ireland, who are the demons who destroy lives, who rip apart the moral fabric, who are a kind of corrupt element within society that we all must stand against, we all must oppose, we all must uh, define ourselves in opposition to. They are the great demons of our time. And the, the similarity between the old Catholic demonology and the new anti-Catholic demonology is extremely uh, interesting. And effectively what's happened is that Catholic priests, whatever you think about Catholic priests, and I'm not a great fan of them myself, but they have been turned into scapegoats in just the same way that witches were in the past, or fallen women, or whoever else the Catholic Church decided to pick on. They have been turned into scapegoats in the literal meaning of the word scapegoat, which is this idea that comes from a long, long time ago when a society would project its sins onto a goat and then cast it out into the desert and then they hope that their sins would go with it to wander around the desert and disappear and everything would be a hunky-dory. Catholic priests now play that scapegoat role for modern Ireland in precisely the same way that other victims did. Uh, who were picked on by the Catholic Church in the past. We believe that if we cast all of society's problems and sins and dilemmas onto priests and cast them out, everything will be fine. And you can see this very clearly in the way that the Irish state now actually blames uh, the Catholic Church for a great number of social problems. So if you read their reports into uh, the problem of Catholic priest child abuse, they will say that this kind of abusive climate has given rise to large levels of alcoholism, unemployment, mental illness, all the things that in the past we would have understood as social problems are now discussed as the problems brought about by corrupt elements, by demons. So just the same way that the Catholic Church would present social problems as the products of individual uh, sin, now in anti-Catholic Ireland, social problems are redefined as the products of uh, priests going crazy and destroying the moral fabric. And the same thing that the anti-Catholic activists rehabilitate alongside demonology is the idea of original sin. The idea that everyone is damaged, uh, is a kind of a damaged item and must be uh, saved by an external force. But they rehabilitate the idea of original sin in therapeutic terms. So they don't talk about it in the old-fashioned Catholic way, but they talk about it in a newfangled kind of opal inquiry uh, therapeutic fashion. 
So in the past, the Catholic Church had this very backward idea that everyone who was born was born with a sin. It was the original sin, and you needed to be cleansed. Everyone was corrupt from the very beginning and was morally uh, suspicious. And what's happened in anti-Catholic Ireland is that that has been kind of dusted down and brought back to life in the idea that everyone who was uh, abused by a priest, or even people who were just educated by priests in stern schools or horrible churches or whatever else, have been damaged for life by that experience. In the new, extremely backward, psychotherapeutic idea that all forms of bad childhood experience will damage you for life unless you get saved, not by priests, of course, but by therapists. The new priests of anti-Catholic Ireland, the people who can save you by coaxing you to talk about your problems, by uh, telling you to come out of your shell. So this is real new bad idea in anti-Catholic Ireland that everyone is damaged for life by what they have experienced. And it echoes very uh, eerily the idea of original sin, the idea that we are all damaged inside and we need to be rescued by some more powerful, more intelligent, more sentient force than us. And then the third thing that is rehabilitated by the anti-Catholic activists is uh, a very suspicious climate, an unhealthily suspicious climate where we're constantly on the lookout for evil and we're constantly on the lookout for abuse. And you can, this is again most clear in Ireland, but you can also see it spreading around Europe where you now have a situation where people in, who run society constantly wear abuse goggles. They're always looking out for the abuse of children. They're always telling us the abuse of children is widespread, it happens everywhere, it's terrible, it's going to ruin everyone's life. And this abuse obsession is actually having an extremely destructive impact on society. It is ripping apart people's relationships, it is instilling an extreme degree of suspicion in people, but they are constantly on the lookout uh, for children who are damaged, children who are being abused behind closed doors. The idea that all adults are suspicious, you can't trust teachers, you can't trust people who run sports clubs, you certainly can't trust priests, you can't trust any adult in a position of authority because you never know what they're doing behind closed doors. And that's what's really driving the idea in Ireland and also in Britain that even the Catholic confessional must now be done behind plain glass or it must have cameras inside it. Because even that small, tiny, sacred space uh, is now seen as something extremely suspicious. Who knows what's going on inside this box? Who knows what abuse is taking place? And the abuse obsession is so extraordinarily widespread that even that sphere of life, which was once seen as the most private sphere for people who believe in God, can now be invaded by the forces of the state who want to spy on absolutely everything that we do. And this really forces an extremely uh, suspicious climate on society, which again echoes the kind of thing that existed in Catholic Ireland, when people would twitch the curtains, spy on their neighbours, see if so-and-so got the leg over with someone else. All that kind of suspicious climate is brought back, but in a kind of anti-Catholic guise. So what we can see, I would argue, is that anti-Catholic Ireland is not actually a great leap forward. The reorientation of the Dublin elite in particular around being anti-priest, anti-Catholic, anti-Vatican increasingly, it's not a great leap forward because actually it is very similar to the old Ireland that used to exist. It still has that demonology, the idea of original sin, the idea that we must all do some moral spying on our neighbours. All those three key elements of anti-Catholic Ireland are brought back to life in a kind of secular PC uh, language. And I think that's given rise to a very destructive dynamic in Irish society and other post-Catholic societies, which is as dangerous as what the Catholic Church would have done in the past. And then the second problem with the modern anti-Catholicism is really what it reveals about the attitude of the new atheists towards religion more broadly. What it really shows about modern secularism and the way in which modern secularism has just become a fairly narrow anti-religious standpoint. And I would argue that the new atheism is not driven by humanism. It's not driven by faith in humanity, but in fact by the opposite, by misanthropy, by a profound doubt that there is anything special about mankind. Indeed, I, one of the most striking things about the new atheism is that 
The thing they hate most about religion is its treatment of mankind as special and distinctive. The fact that it treats mankind as the governor of the earth. The fact that it's, it says in Genesis, mankind has dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and every other living thing that moves on earth. And in our very meek, relativistic, downbeat, environmentalist era, that kind of cocky view of humanity as special and uh, unique and as having dominion is extremely unfashionable. And that is the key reason that the new atheists hate religion today, because it puts man on the pedestal. It says that man controls this earth, man has free will, man is a conscious and moral being, and he should govern the planet uh, in a good way. And you can see this kind of, uh, the new atheist discomfort with religion and humanism in the way in which they talk about uh, mankind. So for example, um, for example, the late Christopher Hitchens, who's obviously a great hero of the modern secularists, says uh, in his book, God is Not Great, uh, you know, all these people talking about God saving man and God doing this and God doing that, don't they realize that mankind is just a close cousin of chimpanzees? So basically, you know, how can you treat mankind as special? We're just glorified monkeys. There's nothing special to us. We're a bundle of genes. Uh, the American comedian uh, Bill Maher, in his film Religious, he said that the thing he hates most about religion is its arrogant certitude. And he says it's completely unfounded because, in fact, quote, hum human history is just a litany of getting shit dead wrong, unquote. And uh, Justin Keating of the Humanist Association of Ireland uh, recently described the Bible as wicked because it gives mankind dominion over the earth, which he says is validation for all those who believe in the cult of more growth and more consumption. Keating says that we are deforming the earth through our belief that we own it, through overpopulation and overconsumption. In other words, in the view of this guy who runs the Humanist Association of Ireland, the problem with the Bible is that it's too human-centric. The problem with the Bible is that it's too humanist, says a leading humanist. And I think this is the kind of time when the only phrase that will do is that you really couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it up that humanists now look at the Bible as being too human-centric and as treating mankind as too special. <coughs> and uh, very finally, I think we need to recognize how different this kind of anti-human humanism is to what existed in the past. So for example, one of the great old atheists, uh, Karl Marx, he said that religion is only the illusory sun that revolves around man as long as he does not revolve around himself. The role of the old atheists, what they considered to be their role, was to demystify man's greatness, to strip away the religious uh, guard that was put around man's greatness and to reveal that actually our greatness is not God-given, it's within us. It comes from within us and from our interaction with other people. The new atheists, by contrast, say actually mankind is not that great after all. He gets everything wrong, he's just a monkey, he's deforming the earth. They, they really want to challenge the myth of human specialness and uniqueness. That is the problem with the new atheism and modern secularism. It rehabilitates the worst aspects of religion, its hysteria and its suspicion, and it does away with the best aspects of religion, which was its treatment of mankind as special and as the governor of the earth. So whatever you think about Catholicism, I think you should be even more concerned about the new anti-Catholicism and the new atheism.